What's up guys, Firewolf here, showing you guys the RG Swift OLED PG27 AQDP gaming monitor. It's packing an insane 480Hz refresh rate, which is wrapped in this gorgeous 27 inch W OLED panel and is the world's first 1440p OLED monitor to hit that 480Hz. I'll be doing an unboxing, sharing my first impressions and showcasing some fire 1440p gameplay using my 4090 and 4080 Super Gaming PC, and let's not forget about the PS5. Stay tuned for a future review of this PG27 AQDP. So for now, let's unbox the RG Swift OLED PG27 AQDP. Comes in this awesome RG themed box. You can see right over here, 26 and a half inches, 480 Hertz OLED, let's get it. All right, with the box out of the way, let's go ahead and see what we get. All right, so right on top, we're gonna have a color calibration testing report. We can see right over here that it is factory pre-calibrated for unmatched color accuracy for Delta E less than two, which is awesome. All right, next thing here we have is the base stand here in a nice triangular shape here. It feels really nice, very sturdy, very metal. Definitely love the build quality here. And I am loving the contrast between the darker gray with the black gloss, I believe. Let's go ahead and peel one of these out. We have a nice gloss black, and this does illuminate with some red RGB lighting, which should look really cool. All right, next thing we have here is the arm portion of the stand. Same thing here, we have this nice dark gray with some gloss black. We can see Swift right in the middle, really nice. Right on top here, they do have a nice quarter inch tripod socket here, so you can put things like a camera or extra lighting equipment, which is really good for content creators or streamers. And overall, it's a nice build. All right, next thing here we're going to have is a Visa mount adapter. Now, you're going to need to use this if you want to mount this monitor on a monitor arm. Now, I'm personally not a fan of having a separate adapter. I would have liked to see this monitor have Visa mount holes directly on the monitor instead of having to rely on a separate adapter. So, you are going to need to keep this just in case. Next, we have the bottom puck piece that goes underneath the actual stand. Uh, which will illuminate with RGB, showing the RGB logo beaming right down. It's definitely a cool gamer's touch, and you can disable it if you don't want to use it. All right, next thing here is we have an awesome accessory pouch. I love when RG gives us this nice little pouch here to store all of your cables. Really nice touch here. All of our input cables are stored inside, so let's see what we get. All right, first cable we get inside that pouch is going to be a DisplayPort 1.4 cable. And I love the attention to detail that RG provides. All of their cables are going to have a nice RG branding on them. Really nice, subtle touch. All right, next up is going to be an HDMI 2.1 cable. All right, next thing we have here is a USB 3.0 upstream cable. And this is going to be used to connect directly to your PC. Next thing we have inside that pouch is four additional pucks here. Now this goes uh, directly on here so you can swap them out. Now, I honestly don't know why they give us three clear ones. I can understand an additional one, but I'm pretty sure they assume that just in case you lose them uh, two, three different times, you have extra pucks just in case. And finally, inside that pouch, we're gonna have a nice sized microfiber cloth here. Really nice and soft. And I like the fact that they include this so you can uh, take care of your nice OLED display. Definitely an awesome touch. It does feel really nice and premium. And of course, since we have this accessory pouch, we can just put all of our unused cable here and you can, you can just zip it up, store it away. So, all right, moving on. It's not an RG product unless if you get some nice RG stickers. So you're gonna get a nice booklet with a ton of stickers. Next, we have a quick start guide followed by an ASUS VIP member notice. All right, next up, we have our US plug which will connect to this power adapter. So this brick is gonna be separated from the actual monitor. We can see right over here, it's 150 watts. All right, finally, let's go ahead and get rid of this. Bring you in a little closer and let's spread this nice and open here. All right, there we have it guys. My first immediate impression here is that this thing looks super cool. You can see a nice translucent design and let's go ahead and take this off real quick. Beautiful ROG logo. Definitely was not expecting this back. I think this looks really cool. And don't worry guys, on the front, we do have a nice screen protector here. So you can peel off, making sure that there's no scratches when you're setting it up. All right, taking a closer look at the inputs here, we can see the DC input for power. We have two HDMI 2.1 ports, display ports, and we also have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack, USB upstream with two USB A ports over here. So I really like to see that USB hub. And right on the bottom here, we do have our menu, four directional buttons with two hotkeys. 
and overall i'm loving the back of the design i mean this thing is so freaking cool we can see right over here for those who dare all right so actually before putting the stand let me go ahead and peel this off real quick all right with that out of the way we have a nice matte black definitely looks really cool all right now installing the stand is very simple we're just going to grab these stands and we're going to angle it in and we should hear a nice click all right next we're going to do is grab the stand here we're just going to line it up and there's a wing to screw and all we have to do is screw it in place we want to make sure that's nice and tight and finally we're going to put the bottom puck here and there are some magnets here it goes in nice and smooth and now we're ready to pick it up and set it up all right so here's the back design of the monitor here it looks absolutely fire i'm loving that translucent on the back here and that nice little slogan there for those who dare now i want to quickly dim the lights down real quick so you can get a better look at how it looks like when it's a little bit darker here um, i think the rgb lighting looks really nice gives it that awesome gamers touch all right now we're ready for a screen reveal here i'm going to remove the screen protector here now obviously it's going to look super glossy but uh, the actual screen is not All right, there we have it, guys. A beautiful W OLED panel here. It's going to have that anti-glare matte coating. And as you can see here, it doesn't reflect much light here, uh, which is very important if you have a very bright environments uh, or if you have a lot of lighting. You can see even the uh, lighting on my wall here, the Firewolf Tech. Uh, you can barely see it, so it has that nice anti-glare. Had this been a glossier coating, then all of that lighting will definitely be reflected. And even if I power on my ring light here with direct light you can see how it dissipates that light so for me personally i like the matte coating because it does help block out a lot of that glare all right now that we have it on let's go ahead and peel this off right over there all right test out the stand here it's definitely very sturdy it does have some nice height adjustments here it also swivel got some nice got some nice tilt and we should be able to pivot for a nice vertical setup. Let's see if it allows me to pivot the other way. Yes, it definitely does. So we can definitely pivot it for a nice vertical setup. Now you do have the option of turning off all of these lights in the settings here. So if you ever wanna do that, that's something you definitely can if it's too distracting for you. Now I have it connected to both my black gaming PC via display port. And then I have um, my white gaming PC with the 4090 uh, connected via HDMI 2.1, which is right now currently. All right, so the very first thing we would definitely want to do here is increase the hertz all the way up to 480. So we're going to click that real quick. And then we're going to keep changes here. Of course, we want to make sure we're maximizing all the hertz. It'd be crazy if you have been using this monitor without enabling 480 hertz. Now, since I have an NVIDIA GPU, um, I will open up NVIDIA control panel and we're gonna click on the ACES right over here. Now, what's great about this is that right out the box, it is G-Sync compatible and automatically enables it. So there's no additional steps required. Um, definitely love that feature a lot. Now on the change resolution, we have uh, of course 480 Hertz. And then we can go ahead and choose using NVIDIA color settings. And under SDR, it actually goes all the way up to 12 bits, which is awesome. Now keep in mind that I'm using HDMI 2.1. All right, and there we have it, guys. We have the max refresh rate at 480 uh, with 12 bit. Uh, and again, this is using the HDMI 2.1. Let's go ahead and switch it over to this 4080 Super with DisplayPort. All right, so switching over to the 4080 Super, using DisplayPort 1.4, I'm able to select as high as 10 bits of color. Whereas on the HDMI 2.1, you're able to select up to 12 bits. Now, other than the bit color rate, I don't think there's gonna be much of a huge difference between the two, since both of them are using display stream compression. So I personally don't think there's gonna be much of a difference, but I could be completely wrong. Let me know in the description box below, which would you prefer to use, HDMI or DisplayPort? My first impressions of this monitor so far has been fire. 1440p looks really good compared to the 1080p 480Hz dual mode monitors that I've tested before. There's not a lot of games that can hit close to 480 frames at 1440p at the moment, but you can still enjoy smooth gaming with G-Sync or FreeSync. There's also a lot of AI features like AI crosshairs, AI shadow boost, 
AI Visual, AI Sniper, and a mobile map helper that can enhance your gaming experience. The matte coating isn't too aggressive, and while the clarity is nowhere near glossier coatings, I think this matte coating will benefit in brighter setups where lighting control is a challenge. It'll take some time to cook up this review, so for now, I'll leave you guys with some fire 1440p gameplay to get an idea how this monitor would look. Now, I had to download Valorant and play with mouse and keyboard for the first time to hit over 480 frames per second, so you'll probably see my gameplay look a little weird. So go easy on me, guys. If you have any questions, drop them down below. So for now, enjoy.
Still here? Well, thanks for sticking all the way through. I really appreciate it. I'll have affiliate links down below that help and support the Firewolf Tech channel. And for any questions on this monitor, please drop a comment down below. Now on to finish the review. Firewolf out. Ah! Ah! Ah!